Tyson Summers signed the last of the documents Jason gave him. They were necessary if Jason was to handle this particular contract. This contract was one of the largest for which Ty was responsible. It involved the assets of Wilson Graves, a billionaire investor and entrepreneur. Wilson, call me Willie. Graves loved nothing better than to use his money to use other companies for hostile takeovers, buying up their shares and gaining control. Once he did it, it was deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. By doing so, he increased the value of his own investments. Damn those who suffered while Willie made his money. As his attorney and legal advisor, Ty was skilled at keeping Wilson's dealings honest and out of trouble with the SEC and other federal regulators, who were keeping an eye on people like Graves, while allowing him to make even more money. And the more money Willie made, the more money went into the coffers of Summers, Reinhardt, and Haynes. Inc. Jason also invaded the portfolios of other clients, and for the remaining two weeks he had full control of the situation. This would complete the three months it had already taken to transfer all of Ty's clients. Besides his own special clients, only Jason, Stacy Reinhardt, and Clayton Haynes knew that Ty was retiring. Ty told himself once again that it was time. Time to let go and take some time for himself. After all, he was one of the founding fathers of the firm, and he, along with Stacy and Clay, grew it from a small law firm to one of the largest and most influential in Columbus, Ohio. It took up much of his time, and over the course of their 20-year marriage took a toll on their personal lives, his and his wife Bridget's. Last month, he and Bridget celebrated their 20-year anniversary together, and they had two children, Jake, 19, and Tessa, 18, both now in college and doing well. Bridget had been a good mother and wife all these years, and Ty did everything he could to make sure they had everything he could give them. Their house was large and beautiful. The children went to the most expensive schools, and they had everything they needed to live a proper life. Bridget was still beautiful and remained so with the help of her spa and health club. She drove her Volvo convertible and loved the way her long blonde hair blew in the wind and played the radio as loud as any teenager. Over the past year or two, the only thing Ty found wrong with their lives was that Bridget was no longer interested in making love. Ty's sex drive was still active, and he was disappointed by Bridget's disinterest. He talked to her about it, but all she said was that she was going through a time where her libido was low, and she would talk to her doctor about it when she had her next checkup. That was almost a year ago, and she hasn't mentioned it since. Their personal life did not improve during this time, and, in truth, it got even worse. Ty stopped asking, and now left it without further comment. Another thing that bothered him was her trips to her hometown of Mansfield, Ohio. She told him it was because her mother's health was deteriorating and that her sister Bianca needed help caring for her. Both were still living in Mansfield, and Bianca was divorced and single. Bridget stayed with her mother when Bianca was away. She said the least she could do was fill in for Bianca from time to time and let her enjoy her free time. These trips began six months ago and now occurred once every two weeks. Bridget left on Thursday morning and returned home late on Sunday evening. She always called every night at nine when she was out and made sure her cell phone was always on, but that meant Ty spent a lot of time alone. He hated being alone. She left this morning on her last trip, which meant another evening alone. He was even more disappointed by this than he let on after he told Bridget that he was working on a big surprise for her and that it would be ready in just a couple of weeks. He even tried to piss her off when he said Stacy was helping him with this, and she was almost done. Ty hoped that her curiosity or even jealousy towards Stacy would make her stay and try to find out what the secret was, but she answered with no more than one or two cursory questions before she began to get ready for the trip. Ty was now not surprised by her lack of curiosity, released her, and simply left her to pack her things. They said their goodbyes as usual, and he soon left for work, knowing she would be leaving within the hour. Much later that day, Ty closed his office, stopped to talk to Rachel, his secretary, and walked down the carpeted hallway to Stacy's office to talk to her before heading home. He knocked once and pushed the door open, 
a habit he had with all his partners. They were used to him showing up at the most inopportune times without warning. Hey, Stace, ready to wrap things up for today? I'll buy it if you want something cold. I'm in no hurry to return home to an empty house. Hello, Ty. I'd love to, but Roger is expecting me tonight. We are going to the school play. Rog Jr. stars in Pirates of Destiny. Sounds terrible to me, but Rog says it's cool. Okay, it's your loss. But his smile belied the comment. No, I don't blame you. I remember my children and their games. No matter how bad they are, they are still your children, and they cannot be bad. We have prejudices, but we are allowed to. We don't know any better. We're parents. Stacy laughed and nodded. At 46, she was still a pretty woman and happily married for the second time. This one has lasted for the last 10 years. Ty knew her husband, Roger, and liked him. How is my project going? Do you have everything you need? I can ask Jason to help you if you need it. She looked up and shook her head. Everything is going according to plan and on time. There shouldn't be any problems at all. Just trust me, and I will move on. Jason is not needed. He will have his hands full with what you gave him. But as you promised, he is a really good worker and will be useful with your care. You know, Ty, I really wish I could talk you out of this. Especially from the pension part. You know we'll miss you here. You have been the main driving force behind our success. In the first days, I just held on to you and enjoyed the ride. I will miss you the most. Are you sure you won't change your mind about retiring? No way. And don't underestimate yourself, Stacy. You have always managed everything yourself and still do. You and Clay will be fine. And now we have a hell of a lot of young people. They really impress me with their willingness to dig deep and work hard. Jason, and perhaps this Alice Chambers, could be offered a partnership for a year or two. Maybe. I really like them both, and it's clear that you trust Jason completely. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, and in two weeks, I'll be at the party. Roger wants to come too. Bring him, no matter what. Okay, good night then. Ty drove to his estate in the suburbs of Columbus. The house was located on a five-acre lot and covered just over 5,000 square feet. It boasted a hot tub that overflowed into a swimming pool, a gazebo, two tennis courts, and a large garden full of flowers and flowering shrubs that bloomed all summer and into the fall. Bridget dismissed the cook and maid when the children left. He mentioned that the house was really too big for the two of them, and Bridget said she agreed. She didn't commit to it, but said she knew it was time to think about moving into something smaller. Maybe they should give the kids a couple more years, she said. Ty pulled into the four-car garage and walked into the kitchen, where he put a frozen dinner in the microwave while he went upstairs to change into his robe for the evening. As he walked down the steps, he heard the phone ring. It was a landline, which hopefully meant it was one of his advertisements. It was too eerily for Bridget to call. He answered the call and was pleased to discover that it was his boat in question, a 32-foot sailboat that was moored on Lake Erie during the summer and fall. It was stored in a warehouse on the lake. After a fruitful discussion with the owner of the marina who was preparing it for sale, the deal was finalized and an agreement was reached to send a sales. Receipt for the agreed-upon price to a P.O. box number. Once the check has been received, title to the boat can be collected at the marina. Everything would be in its place. Bridget would be pleased, since she never liked this thing. She hasn't been on it with Ty for years. Now that the boat was sold, and his Jaguar and Audi were promised to the auction winners at a high price, there was nothing to worry about. By this time, two weeks from today, everything will be ready and his retirement can officially begin. Selling the house may take a while, but by then he and Bridget will no longer be in the house, so the realtor can show it without worry. The new, smaller bungalow was now his, and he had already moved some of the furniture into it. Any additional furniture needed could be purchased at any time. Ty ate the frozen dinner without tasting it and decided to just lay back and tune out the mindless TV. He took a cold bottle of Miller Lite into the living room and decided to watch some adult movies. Now that the kids were gone, he had all the channels on and he switched to the adult channel and found some story about a hotel where everyone was there just to have sex with everyone they could find. For women, this was not a problem. 
They all had gorgeous breasts and perfect asses. All the guys were six foot five, built like Arnold Schwarzenegger and hung like horses, so they had no problems either. As the film progressed, Ty began to wonder why they were all doing the same thing the same way, looking at the camera while moving. No imagination, just excitement. He couldn't get excited enough to take matters into his own hands. At nine, Bridget called. Ty replied, Hello, Bridget. Any problems getting there? No problem, honey. Easy trip. Mom is a little better, but Bianca is stressed. I can stay a little longer if you don't mind. These words made Ty's stomach clench, but he suppressed the discomfort and answered in a calm voice. Of course, whatever you think is best. I'll just stay at work a little longer because it's lonely here without you. But what about Monday? Do you need anything? Do you have enough money? Looks like you didn't take much with you. Oh dear, it's okay. It's because I have a lot of things here that I left when I left. I'll be fine, so don't worry. And by the way, how's this surprise going? I can't wait to find out what it is. I don't think you care at all. You weren't very interested this morning before I left for work. But since you asked, everything is going exactly according to schedule. Stacy is almost done with her part and the rest is already in place. You will really be surprised. I cannot wait. Okay, honey. I'll call you tomorrow evening. Behave yourself. You too. Just remember that I love you. Good night, sweetheart. Ty once again noted to herself how impatient she was to end the calls and hang up, and she did not respond to his, I love you, with anything other than a wish for good night. Well, maybe she was busy with her mother. The thought made him smile. Her mother was a real bitch. She never cared about him and didn't even make a secret of it. But that wasn't a problem since Ty didn't like her either. She, like Bianca, divorced her husband for adultery. This entire family was dysfunctional at best. So the rest of my weekend alone continues, Ty thought to himself. To keep himself occupied, he called the children, talked to them for an hour or more, reminding them of his call to come in two weeks, and then simply allowed himself to relax. He fell asleep on the couch and woke up in the middle of the night with a stiff neck. He went to bed and fell into a dreamless sleep. The next two weeks went by as usual. Ty worked to finish all his business and make sure Jason was on top of everything. He spent much of that second week calling his clients and informing them of his upcoming resignation. For the most part, they were happy for him and willing to work with Jason. Some wanted reassurance from either Stacy or Clayton, and he made sure they were contacted right away. Everything was ready for that last Thursday when Bridget would leave for Mansfield. Ty managed to keep his upcoming retirement a secret from Bridget as planned. She rarely asked about his work, so it wasn't much of a problem. Besides, she forgot about the surprise, and Ty didn't bring it up again. He would mention it on Sunday morning when she called him to tell him she was leaving, especially if she decided to stay longer again. Either way, Ty was ready. Friday was Ty's last day of work, and it was a hectic day. She and Rachel worked together, cleaning the house and handing paper files to Jason. A few more phone calls, and then he told Rachel to transfer all his new calls to Jason. As part of his plan, he gave Jason his own secretary, and Rachel worked with him. The last thing he did that morning at work was tell Stacy to take action, and she said she was ready. She went to the courthouse later that morning, but promised to be back in time for the retirement party they were having at the Radisson Hotel. Everyone knew that Bridget couldn't be there, but that didn't delay the celebration. It promised to be amazing. Ty left just after lunch to discuss a number of things that needed to happen, and by three o'clock in the afternoon, everything was in place. The final paperwork for the house was signed and the movers were on their way. They promised to finish by Saturday evening. Once the movers were done, the people he hired to clean the place from top to bottom would be there and they had orders that needed to be finished by the evening. They were promised a bonus if they finished on time. The realtors were supposed to put up a for sale sign in the front yard by the end of tomorrow, and they told him they already had a list of people who wanted to see the property starting next Monday. To their delight, he set a normal price for the sale. The last thing Ty needed to do was make sure all the financial arrangements were met, 
Bridget and he had two separate accounts in addition to the joint ones, and each had their own credit card. It was at his insistence that they only had one card each, since Ty did not approve of maintaining a credit balance with anyone. She handled it very well and was never frivolous with money. She managed their accounts with great skill, and other than Ty's private business accounts, which were managed by a firm hired by his company, she knew about all of their finances. She wasn't privy to Ty's accounts at the firm, but she'd never bothered to ask him about it and had forgotten over the years. Now that he was retiring, he closed all open accounts that had both names on them and transferred the retirement account to a new broker. Ty intended to handle all of their joint business in cash for the near future, or at least until they worked things out. Since the new home will be out of state, the accounts will also be outside the U.S. There was no reason to open bank accounts in the States since he had no intention of returning anytime soon. He had already opened an online account with an international bank that had branches in Europe and South America. Ty was confident that Bridget would have no problem making the switch. She was very smart in money matters. Finally, he made sure that the tickets were in hand and the destination was confirmed. Ty thought about how the two of them would spend the next few months at a beautiful resort in Costa Rica. Sun, sand, swimming, sailing, horse riding, you name it. They had it all. Ty made one trip to the resort alone to convince him that the brochure was real and then told Rachel to book the trip and make reservations. He wanted everything confirmed by the time he retired. It may be worth noting that Tyson was a very wealthy man and accumulated a lot of money over the years. He handled many high-profile cases with wealthy clients. Because he was very good at what he did, his clients recognized his value and paid him handsomely. He invested his earnings in high-yield accounts and did very well over the years. As a lawyer, Ty knew the law and legally transferred most of his money to offshore accounts outside the United States. They were still intact. Again, Bridget knew nothing about these accounts, and that was part of the surprise. If that were the case, she would be amazed at how much they cost. Of course, this money was located across state lines and was not subject to U.S. tax laws or U.S. courts. When the day was over, Ty drove to Radisson for his retirement party. Bridget knew nothing about his resignation, and therefore about this party, since everyone had given him a firm promise to keep it a secret. She'd been trying to get him to think about retiring but missed the opportunity last year. However, his retirement should have made her happy since she always complained about the time he spent at work. He told them all that it was to be a surprise for Bridget, and that his plan was to tell her everything on Sunday evening when she returned home. Ty was confident that she would be home on Sunday, because he intended to start the surprise the morning she called. This was his plan, and so far, everything had been going perfectly. The party was a lot of fun. Ty danced with all the women and talked with all the men, and they recalled past stories about their most interesting affairs. Jason was there, and he spent most of his time next to Ty to make sure nothing important escaped his notice. Tyson really liked this guy. He was going to be a real asset to the firm. Stacy and Clay were there with their spouses, and Ty talked to them for a while. Stacy and Jason were the only ones who knew about all of his plans, and they were sworn to secrecy as his official lawyers. Are you sure everything is ready? She'll be home Sunday night, and I want to make sure she's surprised. Do you promise? Everything is ready to go, Ty. Just relax. I have receipts and amounts clearly documented, so she will be surprised, and you will be pleased, I'm sure. She'll really enjoy being surprised like this, Stacy whispered sarcastically. I laughed. She will definitely do it. I think it will be great. By the way, I bought tickets to the resort, and we are leaving for Costa Rica on Sunday evening. It will be relaxing and entertaining and I fully intend to enjoy it. I'll call you as soon as I have a permanent number, but in the meantime, my new cell phone will be active. You and Roger should do something like this yourself. Maybe one day. Right now, I enjoy what I do too much to quit. Well, it's up to you to decide. Be sure to tell Clay that I'm sorry for not including him in all of our plans. I stayed until almost midnight before I finally left. I missed Bridget's call, but she must have left a message. I drove home, went inside, and sure enough, the message light was blinking. I pressed the right button and listened. Ty, where are you? You never miss my calls. 
Look, I'm going to my mom's tonight, so don't try to call me there. I don't want to wake her if she falls asleep. She is so tired all the time and needs rest. I'll call you tomorrow evening, so please be home. Good night, baby. Well, almost as Ty expected. She won't call tonight now that she left her message. He spent the rest of the evening packing his clothes and making sure all of Bridget's things were packed as well. He didn't have much time until Sunday evening, and Ty didn't want to make any extra trips before the movers arrived tomorrow. Since Bridget did not intend to return home before all the moving was completed, he packed her things very carefully and carefully. She wouldn't have anything to complain about. He took his time and did everything right. He intended to stay in the bungalow overnight and ensure that all calls were forwarded to his new mobile starting tomorrow. Once he had everything moved into the bungalow, Ty finished, made a phone call to make sure the last part of the surprise was in place, and then went to bed. He was pleasantly tired from the party and on edge from everything that was going to happen in such a busy schedule. As he fell asleep, he hoped that nothing unexpected would happen. On Saturday, the collection and removal of furniture from their home began. It was a little sad, but Ty shrugged and left the movers to their work. He was going back to the bungalow to meet their children. They were arriving around noon, and Ty needed to discuss his plans with them so they wouldn't be too surprised. He hinted to them about his resignation, but not about his plans for Costa Rica or anything else. Now is the time to bring them up to speed. He had to do this with their promises not to call Bridget and ruin his surprise. He thought they wouldn't mind it. When they arrived, he invited them inside and sat them down to begin bringing them up to speed. He kept it short and to the point, and when he was done, he answered all their questions and gave them details when they asked for them. Neither Jake nor Tessa were happy with what he was doing, but he assured them that their college education was taken care of and that they would always be welcome home, no matter where that was. He assured them that his retirement was something he and Bridget had discussed and agreed that now was the right time. They wanted to talk to Bridget, but he made them promise to wait until Sunday evening when she returned home. In the end, they agreed. They all went out to dinner that night and were silent when Ty answered Bridget's nine o'clock call. She was brief as usual, but didn't mention staying longer, so he was still waiting for her on Sunday night. After the call, the children discussed his plans again and wanted to make sure that he still wanted to continue in the same spirit. He assured them he was fine. And when they went to bed in the spare twin room, he made a phone call to make sure the movers had finished and the cleaning crew had started work. Everything went according to plan, and Ty was pleased. One last call, and he was done for the night. Sunday was a day when there was little to do, and almost everything was ready. He checked the house and found everything in place. The movers and cleaners left the place spotless and ready for showing. He returned to the bungalow and waited for Bridget to call, telling him that she was ready to leave. He expected her to call at her usual time between 10 and half past 10. The kids had left to be with their friends, so Ty was alone when she called. He answered after the first ring. Hello, Bridget. Are you ready to go home? Ty waited for her answer, already starting to get nervous. Well, yes and no, Ty. I would really like to stay a few more days to give Bianca a little more time to do some things. Would you really mind if I did this? Her voice was tense, as if she expected him to object. She should have known he wouldn't like her request. Ty heard those words, and for the first time felt the anger he had been holding in for the past few months, trying to break free. Did she want to stay a few more days? Why? Well, now he knew, didn't he? He'd known about this for over three months, long enough to start planning his surprise. Now it's time to put your surprise on display for everyone to see. Now it was time to do what he had been planning for the last three months. Once he knew for sure. Now is the time. When he made this decision, his anger finally came to the fore. He had held it inside for so long, and now he could let it go. With anger preventing him from speaking without shouting at her, he answered her request. Well, Bridget, my love, why should I object? Just because you want to spend a few more nights with your lover, Kevin. Why should it bother me now, 
since you had sex with him and that other guy, what's his name? Oh, yes, exactly, Ben. His voice was now choked with anger, and he had to stop himself from shouting at her. You've been doing this for the last six months. Or was it longer? I just don't know for sure. But what the hell, this has been going on for a while, and you think I should have just pretend nothing happened? There was silence on the other end of the line, followed by a sob, and then the phone went dead. Ty just stared at the phone in his hand as if it were a snake ready to bite. He realized that Bridget had hung up on her end, which was a surprise he hadn't expected. Finally, he placed the offending instrument on the table, his hand shaking with remaining anger. She hung up. He did not expect this, and he had nowhere to throw out his pent-up anger. As Ty fell into a chair by the table, his phone rang sharply. He just stared blankly as the sound bounced off the walls. He kept calling the burner phone he had bout for this purpose had no voicemail. Finally, he picked up the phone and pressed the talk button. Yes, that was all he could get out. His anger burned away with the sudden end of it all. He was in the mood for an argument or a squabble. A screaming fight between a cheating bitch wife and her scorned husband was what was supposed to happen, but her abrupt end to the conversation caught him off guard and poured his anger like a bucket of water onto a fire. Now he was numb, dead inside and numb from the pain he was holding back with his plan of action. Without a cathartic outlet for his anger and pain, he suddenly found himself helpless to stop the piercing pain that was squeezing his heart. Bianca's angry voice screamed at him from the tiny speaker. Ty, this is Bianca. Don't hang up. Bridget is a wreck and almost hysterical. She flew out of here and drove away in her car. What did you say to her? What did you do, Ty? What the hell did you say to make her react like that? What the hell did you do? Suddenly he had a new target for his anger, and this one was a full-fledged accomplice in Bridget's betrayal. This bitch was just as guilty as his cheating wife. Well, Bianca, my loving slut of a daughter-in-law, I only told her to stay in your viper's nest for as long as she wants so that she can spend extra time having sex with her lover, Kevin Clark. I know all about you two and your boys, you and Bridget and Ben Stinson and that asshole Kevin. I know about the motel you always use and the nights you spend together, just the four of you. It must be really confusing with the lights off. Oh my God, Ty, don't. You have to let her explain. Ty, it's not what you think. She doesn't love Kevin. It was just a stupid mistake, and I'm just as guilty as she is. Ty, Bridget loves you and only you. Don't do anything stupid now. You guys have something to live for. Please, Ty, please wait until Bridget can talk to you. Please. Well, there won't be anyone here when she arrives. There won't be much talk, and I won't be the one waiting for her. But what the hell? She didn't care either way as she wanted to stay longer so she could continue having sex with Kevin. She sure as hell hasn't had sex with me since she found good old Kevin. Now she will have as much time as she wants to have sex with whoever she wants. So you two sluts should have a lot of fun in the future. Ty, no, don't say that, Ty. Oh, God, no, please, Ty. It will kill her. She loves you so much it would kill her. Ty, you can't do this. You cannot. What about children? What will Tessa and Jake say, Ty? You can't tell them. It's too late, Bianca. I already told them. I told them the whole story and let them know how you two threw us out like trash. I told them what their mother had been doing all that weekend when she told them both that she was taking care of her mother and giving her sister a break. FYI, they took it very well. Stacy took it harder than Jake, but they'll probably forgive her since she's always been a good mother, right up until the first time Kevin fucked her into forgetting about the rest of us. Ty, is there really no hope for you two? Are you going to throw away 20 years of a wonderful marriage over this? Ty, please think about what you're doing. Please. Oh, Bianca, bitch, I don't throw anything away. You and Bridget threw me and our children away. I didn't do it. Goodbye, Bianca, and say goodbye to your mother for me. She never liked me, and now she must be laughing her skinny ass off. Ty passed out, then looked around the small bungalow one last time. Bridget would love this, he thought to himself. He then laughed at the thought. He turned off all the lights, placed the spare keys on the table along with Bridget's letter, and walked out the front door. He closed the door, got into his rental car, and drove to Rachel's apartment. 
She was waiting for him in front of the building when he arrived. He got out, loaded her three suitcases into the back seat of the car, and then held the door open as she climbed inside. She smiled at him as he closed the car door. He walked around the driver's side of the car and slid inside. Well, Rachel, are you ready? She laughed and hugged him. You better believe it, love. It was hell to see you every day in the company, but not be able to touch you or talk to you. If Bridget hadn't left you and then given us this weekend, I don't think I would have been able to bear it much longer. Thank God there are cheating wives. She laughed again, and Ty started the car, heading into a new, happy life. Story Bridget As I was about to call to ask Ty if he would mind if I stayed a couple more days, I had a strange feeling that I shouldn't do this. I told Bianca this, but she just laughed at me and asked if I wanted to spend a couple more nights with Kevin and Ben. I felt a pang of guilt, as I did whenever I thought about the time I spent with them both. But, as in the past, this attack could not survive my own thoughts of lust. I shudder it and pick it up the phony. The conversation started as usual. Ty asked me if I was coming home. He sounded so normal, reminding me that this was a world Ty knew nothing about, and it gave me the courage to do what I knew I wanted. I went ahead with it by asking him if he would mind if I stayed a couple more days. When I did this, I looked at Bianca and her smile reassured me that I was doing the right thing. As I waited for his usual response to do what would make me happy, I once again thought to myself that Ty wouldn't mind and he would never know what I was really doing. I would never let him find out because it would hurt him too much. I love Ty. I really did. But sex with him had lost its appeal for me, and now I found an outlet that allowed me to continue to love my husband, but enjoy sex with someone else. The one with whom I discovered a wild side of myself that I never expected. I was completely absorbed in the illicit pleasure he gave me. I was pleased with myself, my own pleasure making me eager to spend another night or even two with Kevin and Ben. I was already imagining our night together, and this thought made me feel warm. That is, until these words came out of my phone speaker and went straight into my gut, shattering my world. Well, Bridget, my love, why should I object? Just because you want to spend a few more nights with your lover Kevin? Why should it bother me now since you had sex with him and that other guy, what's his name? Oh yes, exactly, Ben. Have you been doing this for the last six months? Or was it longer? I just don't know for sure. But what the hell? This has been going on for a while now and you think I should have just pretend nothing happened? I couldn't speak. I was frozen in fear and panic. I know I slammed the phone down and sobbed loudly. That's all I could get out before everything became clear to me. Oh my God, he knew. My life was over and I was about to lose the only man I had ever loved. I had to go home. I had to leave now to catch him before he could do something terrible. I grabbed my car keys and ran out of Bianca's kitchen. I started the car and pulled out of her driveway. I turned and headed toward the interstate and home. I had to go home. I had to. The trip usually took me three and a half to four hours, but now I drove the car as fast as I could. I was immune to any threat from the police patrolling the interstate, and I didn't care about speed limits. I had to get home before Ty left me. I should have talked to him, told him that I loved him and that I was a fool. I did something stupid and selfish, but it didn't mean anything to me. Kevin and Ben don't matter anymore. I will never see them or Bianca again as long as I live. I would tell him about this. I would have left everyone else if he had stayed with me. Over and over I rehearsed the words I would use to convince him not to leave me. I was seduced by Bianca and her lifestyle, and my lack of sex drive was a problem that she said would go away if I allowed myself to go with someone I didn't have to please or care about. She convinced me that it would awaken my sex drive and benefit Ty. I was just going to try it. But then I was seduced by lust and the thrill of doing something disgusting, it revived me and I would take it back to my marriage bed with my husband. I was happy with this. It will work. Ty would accept the new me. He should have been. Then, a hundred miles later, I asked the question Ty would have asked. Why didn't I get any of this lust? Why haven't we made love these six months since I started my affair? I didn't have an answer to this question. I had to come up with something. I should have thought. I was still trying to find the words to answer that question when I pulled into our driveway. 
I was surprised to see four cars parked in our driveway. I recognized the two cars as belonging to my children and was surprised to see them there. But almost as quickly a feeling of fear came over me in their presence. I drove around them on the grass, Brakehead got out of the car and ran towards the house. At that moment, I saw someone get out of one of the cars and move to intercept me at the front door. I ignored the man and reached for my keys. He tried to stop me, but I pushed him aside and inserted the key into the lock. It didn't work. I tried again and again and again, but the key wouldn't fit. I threw him on the porch, covered my face with my hands and cried. I turned to the door and started pounding on it with my fists. I pounded until the pain in my hands forced me to stop. I looked around and saw that the man who got out of the car was still standing there. He asked me if I was Mrs. Tyson Summers, and I nodded my head. Yes. He handed me an envelope and said quietly, You have been served, madam. He then took another smaller envelope and handed it to me. These are the keys to your new home. The address is inside and the property is yours without encumbrance. Inside you will find all the documents and information you need. I took both envelopes and just stared at them. My mind was numb with sadness and pain. He reached into his coat pocket and handed me a white envelope. There are several checks here for the amount of savings and checking accounts that have been closed. This house is for sale, and the proceeds will go to you once the sale is completed. This is all included in the divorce papers, and the terms are very clearly stated. The man closed his briefcase and prepared to leave. He reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out a business card. In case you forgot... That's the name of your husband's lawyer. He walked away and got into his car. He spoke to the man in the other car, whom I didn't recognize, before backing up and driving away. I was stunned as I held the envelopes this man gave me. I looked at the card and saw that it was Stacy Reinhardt. The name sent a flash of anger running down my spine, but it passed quickly. Stacy was only a problem in my own head. I knew this but over the years I used it as a wedge to make Ty feel guilty. Understanding came now, but it didn't help when I looked up and saw her walking towards me. Hello, Bridget. You don't look well today. I just wanted to warn you. Ty asked me to take care of business in his absence. In case you are interested and have a lot of questions, I can give you some answers. First, Ty retired as of Friday. We all threw a party in his honor. It was a great party, and a lot of people came to celebrate. It's a shame you missed it. But apparently you had other, more important things to do, didn't you? Secondly, this house was transferred to a realtor for sale. A while ago, you signed a power of attorney with your name, and Ty used it to transfer the title into his name. But don't worry, all the proceeds are for you. Ty left it to you during the divorce. He also bought you a nice bungalow, paid for and furnished. Your children will take you there. Finally, Ty gave me full authority to act on his behalf in the divorce and in all his affairs here in the States. Ty has left the country, and I believe he intends not to return for some time. She stood there, watching me, as I digested what she told me. It was as if every word she said was a hammer that drove a stake into my heart deeper and deeper. I almost suffocated from the suddenness with which my life collapsed. I opened my mouth to ask questions but nothing came out. I realized that I had been beaten by the person whom I had so easily blindly betrayed and disrespected. The man I knew deep down was the only man I could ever love. Now I had lost his love and had no idea what to do. Suddenly I felt more alone than I had felt in twenty years. I had my children and my life, but my anchor for everything I cared about in this world had left me. I have never felt so alone in my life. I can't understand why you did this to Tyson, Bridget. Having worked with him for the past 15 years, I know that he loved you and his children more than anything in the world. When he found out what you were doing, it almost killed him. Roger and I helped him through the crisis he was in and made sure he remained calm enough to make plans to deal with you. We made sure he didn't do anything stupid. Just so you know, he was contemplating suicide, but we talked him out of it by reminding him about his children. He is now with another woman who also helped him through the crisis caused by your actions. It doesn't matter who she is, she's just with him and will take care of him as long as everything goes his way. Tyson won't agree to talk to you, and he doesn't care if you resist the divorce. 
It will be in my hands, not his. So do what you want. Just know that Tisson is out of your life and will never come back. She turned and walked back to her car. Without looking back, she got into the passenger seat of the car and it drove away. I walked slowly down the driveway towards my children, who were standing together by the cars. I had to face them and listen to their anger and judgment, but I didn't really care anymore. I betrayed my husband, their father, and lost him, and nothing else mattered. Their anger at me wouldn't change anything. Nothing they could say or do could hurt more than the words I heard from Ty. God, how painful it is. And all he did was present the truth as he saw it. As I stood in front of Jake and Tessa, my grief brought me to my knees. Jake leaned over and helped me up, but there was no concern on his face as I looked at him. I saw anger, disgust, disappointment, but no concern. It was painful for me, and I started crying. And instead of hugging me, my daughter stood in front of me, with her arms crossed and her face a mirror image of her brother's. I told myself that I couldn't feel worse after losing Ty and my marriage, but the look on my children's faces told me in no uncertain terms exactly how they saw what I had done. And that was even worse. I cried for what I had lost while my children stood by and waited. They offered no consolation. I lost them. I turned and looked again at the house Ty and I had bought to start our family. I loved this house with all my heart and always felt proud when I returned home. Now it has disappeared. Everything has disappeared. My husband, my marriage, the love of my children and the home we shared. What have I done? Why did I never think about the consequences of my actions? Why have I never thought about this? Now I will pay for this for the rest of my life. The consequences are a bitch.